Deep Dive Film School makes no claim of ownership of the film footage used in this episode. The film footage is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Deep Dive Film School uses the footage only for purposes of education, commentary, and criticism under fair use. Also, we're going to spoil the hell out of this movie, so this is your warning. Welcome to Deep Dive Film School. That's all you're saying? <laughs> Yeah! Okay. Yes, I am impressed by the professionalism. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, it's Adam on the edit here. If you remember, we had Craig on the 101 back in October to talk about sci-fi tropes. This is the first version of that conversation, which had lots of technical issues, so it never aired. So after cutting out all the glitchy and noisy parts, some of this might seem a little disjointed, but it's still a great original conversation that we thought that you would enjoy. So let's dive in. <laughs> I am Adam Sherlock. Next to me, Mr. Adam Palcher. Hello, this one over here. And then we are also joined by Craig. I didn't catch your last name. What is it? Hanks. Hanks. Boy, you, I'm Hanks impressed Lott. with the, the research department around here. Is, I mean, uh, I didn't know. I didn't even know you were coming over. I won't lie. <laughs> we thought we would take a look at some science fiction tropes in this week's for 101. Sure. And uh, Craig is the perfect person for this. Do you want to tell the audience why? Uh, well, so I, I run the Legendarium podcast. We do a lot of fantasy literature and a lot of sci-fi literature as well. So. We'll put the thing down here. Although probably right now there's more people that are watching that know you than know us. <laughs> well, and then they know that I'm a giant fraud because I do read more fantasy than sci-fi, but I am a, a sci-fi oh, fan. Absolutely. I watch more sci-fi than fantasy. Why though. is that? Because fantasy film sucks, <laughs> generally. I could see that. There's yeah. some shitty sci-fi out there though. That I, I was looking at time travel as a possible one that I was going to do also, um, but I was looking more at some of the very, the smaller granular uh, tropes underneath that. Mm -hmm. And so again, one of them was this idea, and you touched on of, of the temporal paradox, where you think about something like a Donnie Darko or a Minority Report, is that, is fate fate? And if you can go and change something, then is the real, the quote unquote, real version the last time you went back? Right. Is is the last time you went back and changed something something now the official version of reality. And then we get into multiverses. Exactly, and, because yeah. now all of a sudden you have to See, say it's right in itself. Well, and 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 it's this, right? I mean, it all comes down to this one single sort of object lesson, which is uh if I take the time machine and I go back in time and I kill you because and you invented the time machine, and I kill you before you invented the time machine. Did you actually die? Because now the invention never existed for me to go back in time and kill you to begin with. And this is why for a lot of people, I'm not one of them, but for a lot of people, time travel is the worst That's storytelling device ever. Yeah, I've heard that. I disagree. You know, I think it's fine. There are a lot of good time travel movies out there, but a lot of people can't get past that. There, this doesn't make any sense. And it literally, it can't make any sense. There is yeah. no such thing as time travel it's that makes sense. It's never going to be perfect. Right. Right. But what I, the place that I like time travel the best is in stories where it's where time travel it's soft sci-fi mm -hmm. it's not like oh this guy could really invent a time machine yeah. like there's never gonna be that it's where there's consequence i was uh, yeah i was reading a book recently called doomsday book by connie willis uh, i was like from back in the 90s or something and the whole idea was it's kind of like timeline with michael Crichton. did you ever see that movie yeah like i remember Gerard that hard butler mm -hmm. uh, but I it's know if I did. there's like this researcher and she goes back in time to the middle ages and she wants to she wants to study the middle ages so, so she gets back and she gets the bubonic plague and it's all a disaster but <laughs> those kind of time travel stories i really like yeah uh, because it's not necessarily like in that book she doesn't give a rat's ass about how the time travel machine works it's and, just it's just a MacGuffin to, to get you there. It's, it's, yeah, it's a it's a vehicle. Another yeah. Trope. Well, and I think a, another good example of that that I really liked was the movie that we reviewed um, a couple of weeks ago, Arrival. That I think uh, utilizes the concept of a different understanding of time and of time being sure, this absolutely. very relative round thing. It makes you tricks you into thinking you're seeing something that. And you don't need to figure out why because you're yeah. right. The whole thing unravels Let at that point. Unfold. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that was that was a great one, Paulch.
the reason I like this trope so much, uh, and you see it in other places as well, is because it really gets into questions of humanity and right. what is it? What does it mean to actually be a person? Yes. Are you? Are you? Attica. Is it? Is it? I think, therefore, I am. Mm-hmm. Or is there something inseparable about our minds and our bodies? And if you, you know, if you say, if you separate the two, are you no longer yourself? Uh, and I, I really yeah. like those questions quite a lot. Yes. Uh, and so that's one of my favorite tropes. But I'll let you guys is there go on movies, that one now. Is there any movies that that you can think of? Attica is the one that comes to mind when I think of uploaded consciousness because they have like, um, you know, I think it. I think babies. I haven't seen them, that movie in a while. Cloning, I think cloning fits really well with this idea of uploaded consciousness, with this trope, I should say, because it introduces a lot of those same ideas. Yes. And, you know, it, it, the, the idea of human cloning is coming. Yep. It's oh, yeah. But what is that going to mean? And, you know, for religious reasons, some people might say, no, there, it's impossible to clone because the soul the person the is not going to have a soul. Yes. Right? But then what happens if a human clone does start to think and feel and they are they going to act exactly the same as the right as the person they were cloned from well it's ex machina where it's like just because it has consciousness doesn't mean it cares about you like it could still just think of you as a bug right Right. it could be like i do have this consciousness but so this is would you call minority report uploaded consciousness because they're pre Predicting. Yeah, it's more, no. that's, that's more predictive. Yeah. But you know what I would say is a really good one, and this is a good segue in, into mine because mine in part is what you're talking about. Uh, a good movie as a segue would be the movie Moon. Um, yeah. I think this is another way of where we have a person with an identity. Sam Rockwell. And then you're oh, basically saying like, we need this person to be uh, uh indisposable (laughs) or disposable i guess Mm -hmm. so we need to because this guy needs to stay up here and work but you could have that guy working on that place for potentially like a hundred years if when this body ran out you had him stored and you had another one in the tupperware and you just pop the top on him and you have load him full and now he's gonna keep working and he's talking to a wife who's been dead for a hundred years what was that almost really good movie with tom cruise and olga kirilenko uh, uh, edge, of edge of tomorrow oblivion oh, oh. oblivion yes, yeah, yes 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 right, right. You so you reminded me of that mm-hmm. so what i went with was actually the fake memory tropes and this fits into the oh, same yeah, thing no, right that, that and it really too. does get to identity like you're talking about um and so i even went and, and i did this as a pretty wide expanse so obviously we have a lot of philip k dick stuff here we have blade runner we have total recall we have a lot of those things Mm -hmm. and again it's this like injection of a memory that's not true but it alters the way in which you see yourself and see the world around you but then i even went all the way to when a government might do that in something like orwell's 1984 where it's like actually here's who won that war right because the government in, in, in a position of power determines what people's new realities are going to be. Uh, and so I kind of went all the way back and forth. Dark City was another good yeah, one. I have that down. Um, uh, Upstream Color is oh, another one. Um, and then the other one that I had on here, which is a little bit different, but same same concept, uh, is Manchurian Candidate. Uh, which where, one? Yeah, <laughs> the remake, the Jonathan Demi remake. Um, and then non sci-fi versions, uh, you have Sixth Sense, where he is continuing to tell this story about himself that is not true, huh. right? Uh, uh, th- that the the real world version of uh, the adaptation fake movie, The One, which is called uh, Identity. If you remember, yeah. John uh, Cusack. Yeah, so the John Cusack movie Identity is the fake movie that Charlie Kaufman's fake brother says, <laughs> and everyone's truly the serial killer at the end of it. And he's like, the you three. can't do that. The three, that not the one. Yeah. The, the one's a Jet Li movie, the three. Yeah, and then they ended up making a real fucking movie of it called <laughs> Identity. But again, that's fake memories. Uh, Frailty is another good version of that. Yeah. Um, Angel Heart, one of my all-time favors, favorites. And The Others is another one that also mm-hmm. deals with the same idea of uh, fake memories or fake realities that people are living within. Absolutely, great. This one to me, I think, is just always fun. Um, you know, you kind of have limit, limitless boundaries where uh, you uh, it, what you want your background to be, like I, visually, socially, emotionally. There's a lot of things you can do here, but you have this oppressive societal control, and this uh, you know everyone has some sort of shared trauma, right? 
that, that, that you know, once you're at this point, uh, Children of Men is one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, I think Blade Runner does an amazing dystopian future. Um, Minority Report, I think, does a good job. It's dystopian in a way, but there's some utopian in there. I mean, they're always contrasting, uh, absolutely. Um, Idiocracy is actually a pretty... Oh, a pretty that's a fantastic <laughs> one. It's, a, it's, a, it's hitting a little close to home these days, but yeah, it's a really good one. <laughs> uh, THX 1138. The that's a fantastic movie. one. Um, you know, it's it's it, even something like uh, uh, Soil and Green, where they're using uh, propaganda to kind of... Uh, sway the societal control. You know, Soylent Green is the old Charles Char mm -hmm. Heston movie. Um, and, you know, it ends up being, you know, spoiler for those. Hey, wait, spoiler what, alert. What is Soylent Green? It's people. Oh, okay. Um, but it's essentially, you know, it's it's very similar to something like Snowpiercer even, um, where you're where you're working off of, you're, you know, some kind of propaganda. I think you could even say V for Vendetta, where, you know, you're getting fed this, uh, just, it's, it's a place where, everything is dehumanized and everything is unpleasant as possible, right? And so um, because you're at this deep, dark depth of this trope, there's hope, right? You can build hope in a story for a movie, right? There, it's an easy way to get to hope, I guess. You know, I was reading up a little bit about the dystopian future thing also. And one thing that kind of occurred to me was, I was like, why, why is it that like teen novels, like young adult novels have been so Hunger fixated games. on... Yeah the dystopian future thing. And then I was like, oh, cause it's a lot like high school, right? <laughs> like, it's like, you're like, you're, you, you've now like, like everything stops, no more games. Everyone's parsed out into these different factions oh, and yeah, like, sure. you know, and like, and so everybody's kind of clicky. And then there's like the government, which is like that's the teachers. Really and point. like, I was like, oh, it makes perfect sense. Of course a teenager would be like, yeah. that's way my life is like, my life is like, there's been a nuclear well, war too. The, the thing is, I, I mean, we can make fun, but I don't think that's entirely wrong. Yeah. In a lot of ways, what we do as adults, so as we're raising kids, you know, whether we have kids or, you know, takes a village and all that stuff. But the point is, kids are barbarians. Yes. And they aren't civilized. And our job as adults is to teach them civilization mm -hmm. in a very real way. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of the dystopian future appeals because in high school, it is a dystopian future in a way where <laughs> it's there, they don't have those the civilizational tenets really nailed down for themselves yet and so they have uh they they have to navigate the world in a very vicious kind of tribal way absolutely and so it makes sense for them to be attracted to stories where it's like no the you know the the adult figures the government or whatever it's broken and it's not to here to it's not here to help me um i'm gonna have to fight for my own survival who was your immortan joe in high school <laughs> craig <laughs> Maybe you. <laughs> <laughs>Well, actually, I did want to nerd out for you a second on the word itself. Okay, mm -hmm. so utopian and, and what it actually means and what it comes from. It's Greek. Uh, well, dystopian. You've already talked about dystopian futures. Uh, dystopia is a bad place. Mm -hmm. Literally just means bad place. And you, so you'd think utopia means good place. And that word does exist, but it starts with an E. Uh, utopia with an E. Oh, yeah, okay. The word that we use, utopia, just U-T, mm -hmm. means no place. <laughs> and so it's a place that we recognize uh, intuitively in our language that it can't exist. This can't be real. And so you watch something like Star Trek and it's kind of hard to swallow it. Sure. You know, what's you? so you roll your eyes when Captain Picard is like, oh, yes, I remember reading about wars. And you're like, <laughs> shut the just shut up. <laughs> that's not that's not how this goes. Like human nature is human nature. And so one of my favorite things about uh, utopian movies mm -hmm. is when they recognize that this is not a real thing. This this is no place that could exist. And so you get a movie like Demolition Man. Oh yes. One of my favorites. <laughs> oh. I, I don't even care what you say. Oh, I love no. Demolition Man. Uh, but there's there's this idea that he's he's and then we could get into cryogenic sleep and all some, some other tropes. There, there you but, go. Uh, but in Demolition Man, he's plunked into this perfect society. Everybody is really polite. They get tickets if they swear, you know, that That's kind of thing. Like, oh, I love it. The rules. Uh, so many rules. Taco Bell has taken over the world. It's, it's all... <laughs> it's and, been a while. Sandra Bullock's in that too, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Wesley some, Snipes. Oh, man. And, yeah, and so Wesley Snipes <laughs> comes in, and then you discover that there's this whole underworld. Dennis Leary the is running part. the, the mm -hmm. underworld, 
And then you realize that Dennis no. Dennis Leary? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> it is? Yes. <laughs> And you realize that this, what you thought you were watching was a utopian future, uh, but then by inserting human nature and, and understanding that this couldn't possibly happen, mm-hmm. you, you quickly realize that, no, we're actually watching a dystopian uh, place. For sure. And so, or you brought up Logan's Run, that's a great one, yeah. where you think you've got this perfect society, but then why is everybody trying to leave, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they mm-hmm. leave and they discover that, oh, it's it was Earth all along, you know, <laughs> kind of like Planet of the Apes or something. There's that tinfoil robot with the uh, dryer vent arms that's trying to keep everyone <laughs> yeah. from leaving Logan's <laughs> Run. <laughs> that movie's shitty, but... Oh, man. I remember when we reviewed that and in the very beginning it's like, they go to the carousel. And we were like, hell yeah! And then the movie started and we were like, oh, oh no, wow. That's not good we don't at want all. To overpopulate. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of overpopulation, you know, I, this is kind of a tangent, but did you see? We just did Okaja as one of the the movies we did, and they're actually raising giant pigs in China. They are. Yes, my I saw uh, I saw a um, I saw an article on it, and it's actually a real thing. Holy I, shit! I so, knew they were up to no good. <laughs> Sorry, Sally is going to become a reality. It There's going to be a little Sally. girl running after her giant uh, pig. In China. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love that utopian idea. The yeah. only part that I really remember of Demolition Man is when the spray paints on the wall and the little robots come out and they oh, go yeah, yeah. and they clean it all off. I like off. when they have sex, they just like hold hands. Or no, they wear headsets or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's all psychic. It's like Woody yeah. Allen's Sleeper where they have the orgasmatron oh, yes. that they it's go inside. <laughs> no, I, I can't remember. Sandra Bullock has like a fake swear word that she can say and I can't remember what oh, it is. So right. I need one of you to hunt it down and put it in the video right now. Okay, I'll put it in right now. now. Okay, cool. Want to come with me? Or you want to arrest me, huh? Okay, I'm with you. Let's go blow this guy. Away. Blow this guy away. Whatever. Mm. Wasn't that hilarious? <laughs> <laughs> um, so my next one that I, was, that I thought a lot about and thought would be uh, fun to talk about um, is actually alternate dimensions. And I like... I'm a, I'm a huge, and we're going to talk about this Are we more. Are doing Mo- Marvel here? No. <laughs> I'm joking. No, 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 no. Not a multiverse. It's not a multiverse. How, alternate, that, how are they different? An alternate dimension is not a dimension that is the same as this place, but with slight differences to it. I think one of the best examples would be a movie like From Beyond. Uh, so this is H.P. Lovecraft. The, the concept being that here in this room right now, in a different dimension, there are other things happening. We're re- recording a podcast about what? That's, We're an, al- not that's an alternate reality. That's an alternate reality. Oh. He's so, saying like the, the ancient ones are somewhere over there. Yes. And we just can't see we them. We just can't see them right them. now. Gotcha. So uh, one of my all-time favorites is a movie that you and I reviewed a really long time ago, but it is Buckaroo Bonsai Across the Eighth Dimension. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie. But again, in that movie, uh, I think he has a four GMC that he has like a, a, a turbo engine attached to it. Uh, and this movie came out like the year before uh, um, uh, Back to the Future also. And it's pretty interesting to see his vehicle and see the DeLorean and be like, they may have gotten an idea here because it's, it's like very similar. Oh, yeah. um, and he that. travels fast enough that he goes through a mountain and while he's going through the mountain inside of another dimension, uh, these one alien beings, there's two alien beings and one group of them that are the sort of good guys see him and they're like, he can help us. So they'd cross over from their dimension to our, back to our dimension to get a hold of Buckaroo Banzai. I think by the time they get a hold of him, he's either doing brain surgery or playing in his rock band with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, but right. God, I love movies. <laughs> I know, they're the best. Uh, some other weird versions of alternate dimensions that I have. Um, the kaiju actually from Pacific Rim come from an alternate dimension, oh, okay. uh, which Excellent I think is one. really yeah. That, that, I think that's a, that's a fun one. Last Action Hero is a great alternate oh, I love dimension that one. where uh, all of the movie. things that are happening in this movie are actually real. That's the reality of this dimension. Now uh, uh, he it isn't Arnold Schwarzenegger that comes from that alternate dimension. It is that actual character from that movie. 
Uh, yes. And then if uh, we want to go uh, one step deeper with that, Purple Rose Purple of Cairo. Purple Rose of Cairo. I was just going to say we did those two together. Woody Allen. Um, oh, okay. uh, another one along the same line would be Pleasantville. Oh, God, I hate that movie. Really? <laughs> oh, that's the worst. <laughs> Why? Really? Why? Are, are we Pleasantville, really gonna, that's this the is, hill you're going to die on? This is not a review of Pleasantville. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. I, you, people will hate me. I just, I hate that movie. That's the it. one. But oh. is there, what's the reason? Uh, because it's fucking fascist. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which part? The black and Never white mind. world or the color world? The, the co- color world the is color, fascist? Yeah, the color world is fascist. <laughs> so they were happier when they were all perfect I, and in black not, and white. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's fascist. <laughs> We'll get into it later. I like that you off camera. I like that that's you're dropping the mic on Pleasantville <laughs> is fascist. I don't think I don't have time to get into it. That's not like a movie that's like hugely famous or like like Pleasantville has, or hugely like divisive cold, either. Yeah, I don't know. Is it hugely no, well, divisive? I guess it just played on cable so much and, oh. and like everybody would stop and they're like, oh, I love this movie, and I'm like, no, this is fucking trash. Well, they have. Doesn't it? Oh, I need oh, to clean it up. No, you're Sorry, fine. Is it? It's Alicia Silverstone, right? No, it's no. uh, who is Reese it? Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon. That's I was right. Yeah, and so after and she everyone, sleeps and, with the yeah, entire basketball who, team, they can't they can't hit baskets. They can't hit three pointers. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Everyone who gets dick in that movie yeah. ends up turning. Cold. Does she have sex with the whole team, or she convinces the girls she, to have yeah, sex with the whole team? Yeah, I think she convinces all the girls. Oh, to okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, is it's fascist. It's like wildfire. Never mind. I take it all back, Craig. You're right. That is fascist. <laughs> Fuck Pleasantville. <laughs> Look, it's all about. It's all about. Uh, tradition is is stupid. Huh? Burn it all down. Authority sucks, huh. um, and the youth should be in charge. Uh, and, you know, it's all about like action and passion, and there's no like there's no limiting principle on anything that that uh, that Pleasantville is supposed to be teaching us. Mm. And so it is. It's, look, it, it's this whole political you know, I will philosophy say, thing that I don't want to get into. I will say but... this. I will say this. Uh, in, in agreement with what you're saying. It, it's also sort of this like uh, uh, proxy lesson ab- about how old rules are bad and we should work outside of that um, and have more variety in a world with nary a single black person in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe if we could do a movie where all the white people talked about how diversity is important, maybe that'll get through to everybody. <laughs> Oh boy, you're hitting a little too close to home. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the deep dive film school, where three white guys are going to tell you all about I don't know Pleasantville. What. We're going to yeah. tell you all about Pleasantville. Anyway, uh... so I had a couple of uh, just kind of extra random one-off ones. I didn't do as much research on these, but ones that I thought were pretty kind of fun to talk about techno babble was one that i thought was pretty good um using a fake device to save the world yes yes of course yeah, of course what do, you, what do you think it, like you know it's all it's the macguffin that we were talking about earlier right uh like, i'm gonna go i'm gonna like, say it's good the thing we have this a41 to uh, i that's think all we need how about those four stupid stones from fifth element <laughs> <laughs> the fifth element is love <laughs> it's oh, adorable I, I it is adorable it's just like in the matrix when she says you can't die because i love, I love you. you and you're like where the hell did that come from yeah, and then he's the chosen one. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. A, that's a techno babble in and of to, of itself. Oh, is just true. that like, it's like, well, the robots have taken over everything, but we're gonna need a sort of Christ like figure <laughs> that can come in here. Someone. We don't just need to find the plug that could unplug all these stupid things. We need a Christ like figure. That's what would really seal the deal. What are we even talking about? What was the trope? Techno babble. Techno babble. What so was you- the other one you said? Uh, oh, the the box, the box, the uh, the unknown device, the un, the MacGuffin. The, yeah. would, well, have either of you ever read Red Shirts by John Scalzi? No. Mm-mm. Read it; it's amazing. If you have ever watched an episode of the original Star Trek, Red Shirts, the Red Shirts always die, right? They go yep. on the away missions and they die. Uh, and so, in this book, it's uh, basically an episode of Star Trek, but the Red Shirts become self-aware, uh, and so they're like, "Oh, oh wow. we're all dying," oh. and so they have to figure out how to save themselves. And like the scientists on board the ship have, they literally have a box that they don't know what it is. They just, all they know is that they put stuff into it and then they get the solution to all of their problems out of it. Oh my God. Uh, It's, it's amazing. It's just, it's, it's a literal plot device. It's 
amazing. Wow. I, it reminds me a lot. It reminds me a lot of Galaxy Quest when they're yes. uh, trying to get yeah. through the engine. And they're like, why would any of this stuff be in a spaceship engine? And it's got like those stupid hammers going back and forth <laughs> and flames shooting up from underneath like the conveyor belt that they're on. They're like, why would any of this run a ship? It makes no sense. <laughs> and isn't it uh, um, uh, Sam Rockwell, who's the <laughs> red shirt, and he's like, I'm going to get killed, aren't I? You're going to go down to the planet. And they're like, maybe you're the comic relief. He's like, I'm not. I'm not the comic relief. I'm going to die. That's a like, great movie, actually. That's yeah, it really is. Because, again, it takes those movie. tropes and it kind of pulls them apart in that yeah. way. Um, uh, dog fights in space. That's all, obviously a trope. Yes. Always a good Star one. Star Wars. Uh, you know, space fights, space pirates, all that stuff uh, mixed together. Um, uh, robot antagonist. AI or robot comes to kill malfunction. I, Fred, oh, I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Probably the most classic classic example of that um but you know any kind of ai whether you know you think that you're just kind of waiting for that robot to like go crazy and it malfunctions or something well, and i think that that all goes back to this idea of the uncanny valley right where it's just like that is like that kind of a story is so deeply connected to the unsettling feeling that we get when we see something that is too human that we initially go any minute now that mannequin is just going to, right? And you're like, oh, God, right? And so it's like, of course, people are going to write stories about that, right? Delayed reaction. Yeah, exactly. But it is like, and so, yeah, the concept of the, or the idea of that being some kind of an android or something is like way, way bigger because you're just like, if the thing thinks that it's human, right? Like, Mm -hmm. that's way scarier. Right. For sure. Um, Another one, intergalactic speed. So being able to, Go faster, to a, faster than light travel. Exactly, like wormholes, yeah, like all all that stuff. But just being able to go to another planet, like you're going to the uh, get your car changed, the oil on your car changed, or something like. I that. love this one. Yes, so much. It's one of it's one of my favorites because it takes it takes science fiction and it drifts toward fantasy. And I yes. I love this i uh, the idea of reaching for the stars and traveling and and exploring and uh, expanding not, our not horizons all the time of asking why or how we did it. It's like right. oh yeah we we figured that out already. Let's just go right. And so yeah, it could be in the pure fantasy stuff like Star Wars, or it shows up in I mean, Marvel. Uh, in, and Marvel does it all the time, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, um, but Interstellar did it as well. Oh yeah, where it's like, oh, we need to we need to send Matthew McConaughey out. How are we gonna do it? So yeah, someone but, put but a wormhole. That one right was here. more scientific. I mean, the wormhole part, but but that one was more scientific because they were trying. No, but that's what I'm it. saying is that it in in the midst of a movie with a lot of hard science, and you know, like the time dilation yeah. that you were referencing earlier, they had this idea of a wormhole, and it's like. A wormhole is like a theoretical maybe, <laughs> right? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, 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 we're straining credulity with even the idea of a wormhole. Uh-huh. Um, and so it, but it allows for the story to move forward and for them to go out and explore and do new things and for us to have, you know, imagination and all that. So I love that trope. Yeah, absolutely. It's like yeah. Keanu learning Kung Fu. I know Kung Fu. Show me. <laughs> it is. It's exactly it's like exactly. that. Where it's just like, well, we want him to be a badass fighter. So why can't we just use all of the framework that we've built up that we've hung oh, our sure. plot on and been like, he can just download it. Yeah. Just wish fulfillment. Yeah. He just <laughs> downloads <laughs> it. And lots of guns. I mean, yeah, exactly. And then it goes and then, they yeah. all show up. Yeah. And yeah. you I mean, do kind of go, yeah, that do wish. That in Bill and Ted's as well, <laughs> where they're like, my dad's keys. And he's yeah, like, yeah. So, tomorrow. And that was, I was actually, and it, that's one, that's a, that's a sub sub trope that I, I did have on my list that I thought was really <laughs> interesting about time travel was this, you already changed the past trope. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, that Bill and Ted's was one of the ones I had on there. And then Terminator was the other one that I had on Uh there where again, and this goes back to the, if you're the one who made the time machine and I go back in time and I kill you before you make it, then does it all actually happen? The same concept exists, right? Where you go. Okay. So uh, if Sarah Connor has this son, then, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z happens. And and then the savior is born and all this. So the Terminator goes back in time. And so the people send the guy back who ends up becoming the guy who, you know, fathers John Connor, right? So it's like that loop already took place because it had to happen that way. So again, this this idea of in Bill and Ted's of like, it's actually like those concepts in it are very, very smart, which is this, very we have to make sure that we go back and remind ourselves. Yeah. So we have to send the time machine back with Rufus at this exact time. Otherwise, 
everything that we've just done won't happen anymore. And they are able to deal with it in a goofy way. But there's part of me that I remember being that age, seeing that movie in the theater, which is funny because I saw it with my dad. And when we left, I was like, what'd you think? And he like suffered through the whole movie. And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, those guys are going to save the world with their music. He's like, Beatles were pretty good at him. <laughs> at the Don't time, I was like, whatever, better. Dad. Don't worry, they get better. Yeah, so... As but, George Carlin says at the end That's of right. <laughs> uh, but, but I remember sitting in the theater and thinking to myself, what if they didn't remind themselves? Like, what would it look like? Like, what would happen, right? Like, how does that unraveling actually exist of all the things that they've just done? And do the future versions of them fade away? Like, like Michael J. Fox's family and, you know, his, his brother and sister? Sure, like... Yeah. What actually happens? They just fade away or do people explode like space time continuum unravel into pieces? Like, sure. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, another one I have is the long sleep. Someone sleeps for months or years mm. and wakes up. That's always. Oh, fun. what was that? What was that? Do you remember the one? not good, but almost good movie with Chris Pratt and Passengers? Yes, yeah, that one. That one. That one's a good one. I think aliens, you know, just anytime that, you know, like, oh, we're traveling to space or something like that. I'm surprised. Why haven't we brought that up really? I mean, that's that's the one I was going to bring up next. Okay. But you finish your thought on this one. No, just the idea that, you know, again, you're playing with time here where someone, you know, uh, uh, this is probably not a very popular movie, but that there's a movie called Forever Young with Mel Gibson and it has Elijah Wood as a as oh. a young kid. Do you remember this movie? I remember and the cover Mel, of Mel, it at the video exists. store. Yeah. <laughs> Mel Gibson gets frozen and he wakes up and um, he's in, in, in a warehouse. And he has- and Elijah Wood and his friend find him and like he starts dating Jamie Lee Curtis, who's his nothing, mom and all this nothing stuff. Nothing about this sounds appealing. <laughs> when does he get his beaver puppet? <laughs> when does he <laughs> The puppet movie? What was that movie called? The Beaver. Oh, that's right. Though. It was directed by your favorite Jodie Foster. Oh yeah. Oh, my Jodie Foster. Ooh. Um, oh, anyways, uh, I don't know, but I just I, I think it's kind of a fun trope that uh, that gets used sometimes that is kind of thrown into the sci-fi realm. Uh, and How bad what, do you think Ellen Ripley's morning breath is after like <laughs> two hundred and fifty years in that capsule? I don't know, maybe all the germs are in stasis too. Yeah, maybe so they, they're they sleeping they also. Yeah, they haven't had time to really, you know, multiply and all that. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a, I've got one for you guys. Okay, okay. So I want you to tell me which one is better. The aliens are here to help us, a la Arrival, which yeah. we, you know, or the aliens are here to kill us all. It's Roland Emmerich all over again. Uh, what are we going to do? I don't know. There's benefits to both. I guess it depends on the kind of movie you're making. And don't, kind of yeah, yeah, don't pussyfoot around this. Tell me your uh, favorite. If I have to pick a favorite, it would be the to help us because okay. no matter what, you can't have that without the, the other side of the world that thinks they are going to be here to kill us. As and well. see, that's actually, unfortunately, like that's the thing I'm super tired of now. Like, I love the idea of the aliens coming to help us, but the man is the real monster trope. I'm <laughs> fucking so tired of between alien invasion movies and zombie movies where it's like the humans are the real mo-. like, no, I don't, I don't get it. People are assholes. I get it. But I'm like, I don't want to just tired of it, you know, like. So I, it, although it, yeah, the Roland Emmerich thing is super played out, but at the same time, like I, I like the ones where they're not here to help us or hurt us or anything. Yeah. I like a movie like Monsters, where, they just where it's just like they're just across us. Yeah, oh, they're monsters, here, like right? monsters, like they're just aliens are here and they're weird and we don't really know why they're here. And and, and at like the end they make at the end they make <laughs> whale noises to each other and they might be in love and so they're kind of phosphorescent and you're like <laughs> bioluminescent and you're like great, okay. See you guys later. Don't yeah. don't step on my house. And yeah. like you don't ever know. Like I like that one the best. No, I I, that's a good one. Yeah, I hadn't thought about. It. Last one I have, and we can end on this: interspecies romance. Oh, sweet, sweet alien love. Mm-hmm. Alien love. Mm. Captain Kirk and the Green Lady. <laughs> Well, that Captain, Captain Kirk and everybody. Right? And every lady. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he and the Gorn had something going on. <laughs> you, you talked about trouble with tribbles oh, earlier. Yeah, yeah, we're talking. No I'm trouble gonna, with these tribbles. I'm going to bathe in these beauties. Oh my God. <laughs> they are kind of just living loofahs, though. You probably could have <laughs> a handful of them in your shower. <laughs> and you just get a little bit of soap and they're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> living loofah. There's your Instagram. Right there. <laughs> living loofah. What the hell were we talking about? I don't know. Interspecies romance. That's right. Well, it's it, this gets into something that uh that sci-fi does a lot, which is use aliens as a stand-in for race. Yeah. Right? 
Oh uh, yeah, which which alien gets, nation it alien gets nation. a yeah, little a one. gets a little transparent and eye rolling sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sensor rings. Where did you get those? Under your bed. Uh, all that's right. all I have for Craig for tropes. Thank but. you so much for joining us. Anything you want to? Yeah, pitch? that's it. Pitch just like your show. Yeah, go career. go listen yeah, we'll to the legendary the podcast. Here. It's right there. It's uh, well. It's maybe not to your taste. <laughs> Again, these but, are all of your listeners maybe, that are t- tuning yeah, in. Yeah, that's right. true. That's true. Maybe it's exactly your taste. I don't know. Um, Hopefully, anyway. we're to your taste. <laughs> How about we'll that? Uh, yeah. Anyway, happy to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Definitely. Thanks, guys. See ya. So, so Craig, do you uh, is this is this as professional as what you're used to? You're seeing the sausage yeah, made. I've seen a little too much sausage for much. I feel like. I feel